I want to talk about perhaps what I would call the original problem with external tables. And there's no inherent problem, but what I mean by problem is that they generally weren't adopted with a great gusto when they first came out back in Oracle 9. And the original problem was they were touted as a replacement to SQL Loader, which indeed they are. But let's explore why SQL Loader perhaps held on to its, uh, its reign as the Oracle data, external data loader, even though external tables came along. SQL Loader is a very cool piece of technology. And in particular, SQL Loader was always easy. Now I've put the easy there in quotes because anyone that's looked at a SQL Loader control file sees something like this and sort of goes, you know, that definition of easy perhaps is a little bit loose. And in particular, even if you are fluent in SQL, because SQL Loader syntax or the control file syntax was something just a total departure from normal SQL, it took people a long time to learn it. But the reason I still insist that SQL Loader was easy was for this simple reason. If you went back to the old versions of the Oracle documentation, going all the way back from 9.2, I think, all the way backwards, no one actually ever read, in my view, the SQL Loader documentation except for the last appendix, which was the SQL Loader case studies. These were awesome because the vast majority of SQL Loader requirements could be almost classified as to these examples. It was effectively, you either had fixed width data, you had comma separated data, you had maybe a little bit of free format, you had some, for example, different character sets data, or you had some data that perhaps wrapped over multiple lines. But that was pretty much the gist of it. That was pretty much all the options you could ever have to worry about. And all you did was you never wrote a SQL loader control file from scratch. You simply grabbed these case studies and simply worked your down list. You know, do I have fixed format? Do I have variable length width? Do I have something else? You simply went down and found the one that was closest to your requirement. And then you simply started with that. Even better is when, once you finally found the one that you were interested in, like I've grabbed on here, which is a variable length data, it gave you a sample control file, which you would simply grab out of the documentation, cut and paste it into your favorite notepad or textpad editor, and then start with that. And you simply change the values. But more importantly, with each line in the control file, we actually gave you an annotation. So just under that control file in the documentation was these annotations saying that number one is you know this, that, and the other, and number two is this, number three. So it literally walked you through every single line on the control file. So you had a starting point and you had a good description as to what you would need to change to make it work on your system. This is why I say that SQL loader control files have always been easy because 99% of your requirements are covered in these case studies and the job is done. There is no better development paradigm than cut, paste, done. If you ever wanted to know why Stack Overflow is so popular, <laughs> there's your reason. So what happened after 9.2? Once we moved on to version 10 of the documentation and external tables were now effectively probably, probably best described as the preferred direction going forward in terms of accessing external data, we removed that section. That section disappeared from the documentation. And so that critical element, the ability to literally cut and paste a almost working example disappeared. This was actually wrapped up in the fact that the entire sample schema methodology, the fact that we had sample pro C programs, pro Fortran programs, pro COBOL uh, sample schemas, et cetera, all got shifted onto a, what we call the, in those days, the examples CD, a, a separate CD of all the information. So it got removed from the documentation because it got moved elsewhere and got replaced with this, the external tables documentation. But I think we missed an opportunity there or we missed realizing that it wasn't just the documentation that killed us. It was the fact that people could no longer cut and paste those trivial examples. Because now, once we get to this moment when we can no longer do that, when it came to building external tables, we didn't have those case studies to build on. This is what most of our experience was like when we started trying to build external tables. I run this here and it basically says this, that, and the other. I'm creating an external table. It's got just a couple of columns. I'm getting it from a directory called temp. It's going to be an Oracle loader, which is pretty much always going to be the case. There's my access parameters. It all seems simple enough. And I get an error. Early iterations back in the Oracle nine days, the errors, I've 
happily will admit probably weren't the absolute best. In the example here, it says I have a missing right parentheses. So let's have explore that a little bit further. Well, those two parentheses there, yeah, they match up fine. They match up fine. The outermost ones match up fine. The next one's in under access parameters. That matches up fine. And so do the list of fields. All the parentheses are all there. So what's going on? This is a bit of a problem because this is the kind of error message that people were unhappy with when they started playing with external tables. It turns out that you need to swap those two lines and then everything's fine. And obviously that's not particularly intuitive, which leads to frustration. Now my table is created and this leads on to perhaps the next criticism that people had of external tables when they were trying to get them running is with a SQL loader control file. You type it in and then you run SQL loader and it tells you if this, the control file is valid or not. With an external table, that validation process is predominantly done when at runtime in a similar metaphor to SQL loader, you only find out at runtime. Unfortunately, of course, with DDL, we normally expect the opposite. We normally expect a DDL, if it says table created, that that DDL is totally fine. But in this case, it's not. Let's see what happens when I try run or query that table. I run select star from my external table. It was table created on the previous slide and I get this rather cryptic set of errors, which once again adds to frustration for developers. Now, if I hone in, it says, yep, I had an error on line four, column 12. At least it's given me exactly where the error is. So I can go back to my DDL and say, yep, line four, column 12, what on earth is going on there? Line four doesn't even have 12 characters. So how did it go? This is one of those oddities that came out with external tables. What it was actually doing is telling you you had an error in a particular section of your DDL. In particular, it's saying that it was actually the access parameters section. How do we get line four, column 12 out of that? It's a little bit obtuse. First of all, we skip the bracket. So we start at line 10 there and we start counting. So that's line one, that's line two, that's line three, and there's line four. So emp no number is actually line four from an access parameters perspective. And then we move along to column number 12 and it says, oh yes, you've used the term number and that's the error. At which point developers are still frustrated because they're sitting there going, hold on a second, number's fine. But you need to remember, if you compare this back to SQL loader, the data types you specify in the field descriptions are a representation of what's coming on the external file, not Oracle data types per se. So we're saying that we have an external integer coming in, hence the term integer external. None of, of this, of course, would have happened if you had done SQL loader because you would have started with this by simply cut and pasting the sample studies. And that's why SQL loader is still deemed as easier than people who are getting stuck in the early quagmires of external tables. But finally, we got our table created again. We run our query and guess what? It still fails. So what's going on there? Well, by that stage, I've discovered that most developers simply gave up and said, you know, screw it. I'm just gonna write some insert statements. I'll go grab this file in Excel, turn it into insert statements and just load it like that. Or I'll upload it using Application Express or SQL CL. They just got frustrated with external tables. As it turns out in this example, it's relatively straightforward. It's just one of those things that doesn't jump out at you because of the somewhat cryptic error message. It actually turns out that you don't specify the path name you simply have to nominate the file name itself. And in fact, I can even see that's not gonna work for me because I've got a typo. I've, I've, as I was trying to highlight that in orange, I've lost the leading quote. Let's assume the leading quote is there. But yes, at that point, finally, you will actually be able to run your queries. Now, if SQL Loader is so cool, as I said before, and easy, maybe SQL Loader can help us when it comes to the intricacies and idiosyncrasies of external table DDL. Because one of the very nice things in SQL Loader is we can use SQL Loader not to load data, but to actually give us the external table DDL. Let's see how that works. If I've got a control file and I can build a nice simple control file, I can use the parameter or the com command line parameter external table equals generate only. And what that does, it says, here's my control file. And I may have written this from scratch or I may have simply cut and paste it from those old case studies, something to get me close to where I need to be. When I run that 
SQL Loader is not going to actually load the data at all. In fact, you don't even need that data file. I've got, you know, in file dummy.dat there. That file doesn't exist. I don't even need that file. All I need is the control file definition. External table equals generate only will then write the following into the SQL Loader log file. The first thing it gives you is a full external table definition. It chooses some names, which obviously aren't that particularly impressive, but all I probably need to do is edit those things. I need the external table name, maybe choose the directory that's probably appropriate to me, but all the rest has been done for me and it's a completely correct DDL. And in fact, you can see it's got a lot more information in it than the normal DDLs we would just whip up if we were typing because we're normally lazy and concise as developers. But we can see here in this way, it's going to give me a completely working correct DDL for an external table. All I need to do is just change the names and I'm then good to go. So using SQL Loader is still a really useful thing to do, but not for loading data. It's really useful for actually getting the external table DDL. And obviously if you're migrating from SQL Loader to external tables, just grab all your existing control files and slap them through this command line parameter and you're pretty much good to go.